Skid, 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 Skid. <laughs> and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. What? Adam. Hello. And Josh. Hi. I keep telling you, Josh, you just, you just keep messing the intro. It's motherfucker, I'm ill. <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> I'm ill. <laughs> Is that right? So yeah, Ill. just like that. The illest. <laughs> the illest of ill, kind of like Fred Dirks. <laughs> Fred Dirks. Oh. So um, the reason we were uh, yeah. slightly delayed is um, we were reminiscing to Lip Biscuit. Yes. Yep. <laughs> reminiscing over the golden era of rap rock. <laughs> golden I, era of rap yeah. rap. Yeah. Are, are, are we actually going to put golden yeah. era on Limp Biscuit? They no. were the golden era of rap rock. I thought you would have more issues saying were they how did rap rock were they have they a golden though? era. <laughs> well, there's that too. There's that too. Because the only other like, rap rock. Well, I guess let's you see. Let's see. A, a short, a short Google search will, uh, will <laughs> give us a, a proper like edema the way you like it, and then uh, let's see. Let's see. We have uh, Beastie Boys. I mean, Bloodhound uh, Gang. No. Uh, I don't think Beastie Boys is rap rock. Uh, Crazy Town, Cyp- Cypress I Hill. This is I the this know. is the list of rap rock bands. Incubus. Those. <laughs> oh, okay. I hate Incubus. Incubus. Fuck that 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 list. Incubus that list. is actually fuck really that. good. Yeah, fuck that. Well, list. Then there's, there's also. Oh, there's a lot of them in here. I don't I, know if I classify some of these as that. I tried to listen through an like, Incubus album, and they're one of those bands where all of their singles are incredible, and that was like it. I don't know. I couldn't. Anything that wasn't a single, <laughs> for some reason, it just didn't really catch my interest that much. They, they were always a band to me where it was like, you know what? Nothing you've done has been fucking amazing, but you have a lot of decent stuff out there, though. Yeah. So like me. Well, when he, <laughs> going, going through this list, it's, I think, I think uh, the Wikipedia is missing the concept of a band that has done a rap rock song versus a band oh, that is a rap yeah. rock band. Because yeah. you have like Red Hot Chili Peppers in here and you have... Like, Give it away. A, yeah, and then you have like Run DMC, and I'm like, okay, but I mean, I don't know if that's fair. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, Run DMC is a rap group who just yeah, did a yeah. song with Aerosmith. Yeah, that's Run DMC is not is not a rock right, group. Right, yeah, exactly. Sense. They, it, it doesn't quite it doesn't quite pull it off. Like rap rock says that there's equal parts of both, and Run DMC falls far far to the one end of that spectrum. Yes, that's why Limp Bizkit marked the golden era of rap rock <laughs> can, can we say like like silver or bronze era By like default. gold gold is far too much crazy. Okay, how about it's golden really... for rap rock can we can we do like <laughs> it's really gold, more of a like a gold foiled era aluminum. or a gold flaked era of rap rock gold marker yeah like a golden sharpied area uh, okay. era of rap rock okay we'll call it that can okay, we do we'll like a that. golden sticker maybe like a gold gold a sticker gold star so i'm star still, yeah. still waiting for the golden yeah. shower congratulations era of for rap participating oh. yeah, like, part- <laughs> the oh, golden yeah. participation <laughs> awards there won't yeah. be a golden shower era until r kelly gets involved in rap rock <laughs> congratulations <Gold>. you tried <laughs> Ah, fuck. Well, what have you guys been up to this week? Uh, I played some Silent Hill in real life. That was fun. You did too. Oh, I did? Yeah. 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 It so, was really foggy uh, here one day too. Yeah. Um, well, oh, yeah. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't foggy here. Uh, that's, oh, that's the thing. I, I got this. Because okay. I got a good way of explaining this one. All right. There you go. So um, I wake up normal morning. Um, it used to be really bright when I woke up. And as normal things happen going into the fall... It's not bright anymore. So I'm like, okay, just kind of dreary walking out. I'm like, eh, I don't see the moon or this, anything. So I'm like, it's just a cloudy day. Then I get to my truck and I see this white, I have a black truck. I see this white shit all over it. And I'm like, did it snow? I'm what like, the fuck? I'm like, how in the fuck can there be <laughs> snow on my truck when it's 60 fucking degrees? <laughs> fucking ash. Yep. I had to turn wow. my windshield wipers on to be able to like clear off my glass. Yeah, Jeez. so basically the entire northwest area of the country has been on fire. Uh, and that's that's not a euphemism. That's not an exaggeration. Basically, this everywhere. This part is on fire. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so Canada's been on fire. Oregon's on fire. Oregon's on fire because of some fuck nugget. And that's, that's the only appropriate term. 
during a oh. heat and dryness warning where someone says, hey, don't run too fast. You'll catch the forest on fire. This fuck <laughs> nugget lights off fireworks in the middle of oh, the goddamn no. forest and starts a forest <laughs> fire. So then there's that. Holy and then shit. Eastern Washington is just on fire because that's apparently what happens in Eastern Washington. And the hmm. combination of all of this and the fucked up weather means all of Seattle and the surrounding area has got ash falling like snow and really really thick smoke like we're talking silent hill levels of thick smoke not as bad now oh well no. it's starting to clear out but yeah right now it's okay there was alerts for air quality because of all the smoke yeah it was it was bad Th- this shit was lit fam no yep no i did it <laughs> i just dropped no. it um, and also let this acceptable. be a bust to the myth that it's always rainy in seattle it gets dry as fuck here during the summer it rained today it rained yeah. today for like the first time in a month for like what 10 minutes yeah but hey yeah. it rained today the ground was wet i'm really excited yeah my grass <laughs> is brown as fuck i just like i brown I, I as went, fuck i went outside today and i looked up i'm like oh my god it's overcast thank fucking god last night i laid in bed and i was cold so i got my comforter that's the first time i've done that in three months you see, I keep all my windows open and fans pointing everywhere. So it actually, even like when it was hot, it gets down into the mid 60s in my house. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. But I have a better situation where my air can circulate, where you have all the windows yeah. in a bad spot. Yeah, we've, we've got windows on one side where there's, there's no breeze potential whatsoever. So my, mm. my apartment just bakes. And and it was it was extra bakey because I couldn't open up the windows because if I did, my smoke detectors would go off. So, you know, <laughs> Jeez. It's like, no, no, That's it, a hell of a problem. there's no fire. It's just it's literally too smoky. It's OK. Usually I turn mine off because I'm cooking and it's like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> like, no, it's fine. It's just it's, I'm sauteing some stuff. It's, it's delicious, fine. motherfucker. <laughs> Shut up. You don't get any. Back when I was a kid, that's how I knew you how to use different oil, man. At, at my grandmother's house. If the, if the the smoke detector went off, I was like, oh, shit, breakfast is almost ready. <laughs> yeah. If the bacon's done. Yeah, it was wonderful. And it's not even that it gets smoky. I don't even know why. Um, I know that um, my first Columbus apartment was really bad. The fire detector or smoke detector was right outside the bathroom. So when oh, you get done taking a shower, no. the steam oh, wow. would set it off. So it's not smoke. <laughs> it's particulate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. Silent Hill IRL, I would give it uh, a 3 out of 10. Not want to experience again. Um, get slaughtered by Pyramid Head. That's true. That's true. There was, there was no random acts of, uh, of slaughter or... Weird two-headed mutant dogs or, or, or babies or on little fire. alien babies, yeah, yeah, or so, random meat walls. Well, yeah, there kind of is. There I mean, it's, <laughs> it's Seattle, so there are random so meat, meat walls, walls occur. And, yeah, in places. <laughs> Once but in a it's, while, it's, yeah, it's okay. just a thing. You get used to it. It's it's an equality <laughs> thing. We just let the meat walls be where they are. They're not really hurting anyone, so why not? <laughs> That's true. That is true. They don't and, hurt anybody. And every once in a while, it's a beef meat wall, so you just cut off a slab, go home, and have you some steak. Yeah. It's great. It works out. But, all right. Good. <laughs> ah, I had, well. I had steak this week. Oh, really? Oh, nice. What cut? Mm. New York. Uh, no, porterhouse. See, I'm. My dad got some cheap porterhouses. And. They is were that delicious. an oxymoron? Uh, they were on sale or something. He nice. said they, nice. they were not expensive. Yeah, I'm a pretty. Um, run-of-the-mill guy whenever i go to the store i don't like ribeyes too much so i typically just go sirloin I, every once in a while i'll do a new york uh, strip i ribeyes love the new york strip i usually get sirloins i think once i picked up a filet because like adam said it was hella marked down yeah and i've always been the guy it's like you know what i like my sirloin i can't I can't rationalize paying twice the price for half the fucking steak and go with the filet yeah. i just can't do it well, nah, the fillet is overkill. Someone had one I was with at one point, and they cut me off a piece, and I tried it. Oh my fucking god! There it's good. is Don't a get me wrong. huge <laughs> difference. I mean, it's unbelievable how much of a difference there actually is on that. The uh, right. one of the things that I really miss about uh, about not being in the Midwest, and I cannot believe I'm actually saying that, um, is in the Midwest we have two things: corn and cows 
and that's it. So when you want a nice hearty steak, you can just like walk down the street and some guy's like, hey, we got cheap giant hunks of meat here. And you're like, yeah, give me one of those. He's like, six dollars. We got meat over here. Yeah. Six dollars. Six dollars. But in, in Seattle, because we're on the ocean, they're like, oh, look, here's all this amazing look seafood this that's like, you know, 30 cents a pop, except I fucking hate seafood. I want good steak, and I haven't found a good steak place. Mm-hmm. You're a tuna steak. No, oh God! There I has to be a good steak the place out there. There's no way. Like salmon, I I like salmon. I'm good with a with halibut. I'm good with like a good old fish fry. Give me some fish and chips, but I just want steak. And I I got a steak out here. It was okay. It was overpriced. It wasn't very big. I want a good steak place. Which is weird though, because there is a lot of cattle ranches out here because the ground's not even, so you can't really farm like you do in the Midwest. So. There's there's a question in chat. How do you not like seafood? And it's not like it's not that I don't like it. It's that I don't want to destroy the ocean ecosystems. So that's why I don't drink water either. Right? I drink coffee and straight vodka. <laughs> the occasional straight you vodka. Don't, you yeah. don't care via, via IV. Yeah. However, you're perfectly fine with massacring all the four legged animals. In oh the world. yeah, no, fuck them, fuck them, dude. I grew up watching The Little Mermaid. Okay. Like the ocean, that's that's where we need to live. Aquaman, he's my dude. Dude, Aquaman is the worst <laughs> Aquaman, superhero yeah, ever. Yeah, I know he really is. He really is. I but don't no, know if honestly, he's the worst. Like, seafood sucks. Uh, what about the? I uh, mean, honestly, what about the Wonder Twin with water as their superpower? See, even I mean, even that guy that, that, that's their own goddamn uh, choice. They can turn to whatever they want. The second one always goes to some useless piece of shit that somehow saves the day. I, I was. I was <laughs> is that true though? I thought one can turn into animals and the other one can only turn into yeah. water. Yeah, that's that's basically the way that works. No, I thought they could both turn yeah, into anything. No. Just the second one no, always turns no, into no. water. One can turn into like a water tiger, but that doesn't mean that. Yeah. There, there's there's still was, water one's just water but like one's like hey you can be any animal you want including dinosaurs uh but you you're gonna be water <laughs> it's like fine. god damn it really tsunami. like you see, that's these, bitch is what i do the creators of these okay, cartoons okay. don't think out of the box they don't think violently enough so i was watching no, i was watching avatar with my wife and i'm like well why doesn't the waterbender just fill the dude's lungs with water and then freeze them so they expand and explode killing the guy instantly right. like, if i was exactly. the water twin i'd be like bitch i'm steam and then have someone breathe me in and be like i'm water <laughs> you're drowning also now i'm ice you've exploded exactly right? that's what Something i was saying hyper, me and a coworker violent. had this well me and a coworker had this conversation we're like what level does he have control over the water? Because if he can go into steam, can get into their veins and somehow like move their body or manipulate their body in the, in such a way, you're like, yeah. oh well, clearly oh. that's the best superhero. Period. Like, there's Funk no Airbender. No you're contest. a fucking animator, right? You well, could do anything the, the you want. The series goes like, into that. They there is blood bending during the full moon because it, it makes their water powers greater or something like that. So they can uh, actually oh, like, fuck with uh, people. So that has an actual oh, manga shit. related to it, right? Uh, no. Or is no. it just Nickelodeon cartoon? I, I think it's just a Nickelodeon cartoon, which is so weird because it's, it's really so good. good. It is yeah. good. It's so good. If you haven't seen Avatar mm. The Last Airbender, go out. It's on Hulu. I think it might be on Netflix. I don't know. It's, it's everywhere. Just go go find it. It's totally worth the watch. Super good. All right. Maybe I will. Question, question for all you guys on the subject. You get yes. one superpower. It has to be one of the traditional ones. Don't get crazy. What is it? Now I'm kind of leaning towards the Wonder Twin. <laughs> if I don't know superpower to choose if you can only have one I I think I think I would go Luke Cage style bulletproofiness and super strength only can, one really I, oh I can choose one, of, one those, of those just one just yeah. one yep. uh, probably probably the the invulnerability so like Wolverine-esque yeah because I mean think about it even if you suck at fighting which by the way I do um, <laughs> if you're invulnerable, you just don't give a shit, right? You just walk up to someone like holding live grenades. And you're like, "Hi, guys! Boom! Oops, I'm fine." <laughs> uh, I think although, it'd be cool to do some sort of. Uh, that you'd they, be fun at parties. Yeah, one of the things they point out in Luke Cage though is he always has to buy new sweatshirts because people shoot at him and they fuck up his clothes. He's perfectly fine, but he's like, "God damn it! I just bought this because he's now got bullet holes in all of his sweatshirts. It's fantastic." That's great. I, I I like the idea of being like elemental though. <laughs> elemental know, like would being, be cool. My which element like some, would you choose? I don't know. That's a good question. Like, it's a really good question. It's gotta be which a one? Yeah, I know. It has to be like fire, water, or like I don't know. 
Earth. <laughs> I, I think. I think yeah. it'd be, it'd be yeah, hard. Okay, so list them all. Okay, good job. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Earth no, would be thinking. Earth would be fun, but I think there's a whole lot of property damage that goes along with that. Yeah. that you don't want to be responsible right. for. So, like, I would want right. super so, speed. You think easily? You know why? Speed. Get me a goddamn alternator. I will generate so <laughs> much power and put it back to the grid. I will be the richest man on Earth. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, good I, point. I don't know about that. I, I mean, I've seen the Flash TV show, and his life kind of sucks, mostly because Barry Allen's a wimpy guy. But you know, well, and it's also because it's DC, and they don't now do superheroes right outside no, of Batman. No, no, I'll tell you what: the DC TV shows like Arrow and the Flash, while it's all like super drama because it's on WB, they're actually pretty good. They still don't touch fucking uh, Marvel. No, oh no, no, not at all, not at all. I'm saying they're they're pretty good for DC. They're better than Smallville was. Yes, yes, that is that is very true. The Smallville wasn't horrible; it was just bad. It was Dawson Creek skinned with a superhero. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's terrible. And now, man. now, now the Flash. It, well, okay, mo- more so the Arrow. The Arrow is like like half of Dawson's Creek mixed with like half of a TV show you would actually want to watch about superheroes. It's mostly bullshit drama, but it's entertaining sometimes. I, I've stopped watching it since. So um, after they killed and brought back seventeen main characters, soap opera style, I'm just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a lot of super strength, but we're also getting like some teleportation. Yeah, that chat. would be one of mine. So I was torn between teleportation Tele- yeah. and telekinesis. I think teleportation would be would be a really double edged sword because you're just like, yeah. oh, I'm going to go to work one day. Oops, I teleported inside of my boss. We both died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Or, well, or someone's like moving like a crate the... of boxes or something yeah. or carrying like a computer. You're just like, oh, fuck. Now my heart is in the middle of a computer it case. Depend- well, no, it depends on how what the mechanics work. Obviously, there's probably some some way to avoid that. Yeah. They're hopefully. hopefully. Like it just wouldn't let you or whatever unless you were not touching something. Right. Like, like you, you show up artificially and it kind of bumps or, or you off you to the like, side or if you could see where you're about to teleport before you do it and see what's there yeah that'd be good i could i could that that uh, because then, then, then i could start the world's best parcel service but oh how, yeah but like, then, you're gonna do that to do package delivery now i deliver pizzas <laughs> how, do, how do the mechanics of that work right like if i grab my computer oh, yeah. can i teleport with the computer and my chair and the desk like if if it doesn't work that way. You teleport and now you're naked in your office. And that's a problem unless you're a porn star. So I think we can guarantee clothes. <laughs> but outside okay. of that, I mean, if you could, like Adam said. I would say anything you're holding. You I couldn't I think, guarantee like, I really clothes. want to, like, grab a house flesh and be like, I would touch. like to live somewhere yeah, see, else. There's Boom, always Malibu. There's always something wrong with that. Yeah, Maybe but you're ready for the struggle of that? Where the fuck's your foundation? Your house is fucked. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just jump real quick before you yeah. do it. <laughs> It's fine. What, <laughs> what am I, some kind of rookie? Or, or like, <laughs> like you grab something, but it's it's all touching, and eventually it touches, you know, a part of the earth, and then you accidentally teleport the earth like six feet left, and you fuck everything up. Or you teleport the <laughs> oh, earth God. into itself, and yeah. it starts to collapse over under its, under its own mass and form a black or a black hole. See, like there, hey. there's so many ways this could go wrong, and now we need to write some fan fiction. So welcome to seventy two <laughs> Fanfic Connector, where we connect you <laughs> with the best fan fiction. <laughs> Tom's next project. Yep. Anyway. Yes. So, anyway, fellas, um, have any of you guys been doing any video games? I think we, we do talk a little bit of video games here, right? Occasionally. Some? A little yeah, bit? I'll, I'll go first because I have such a short list because I'm a bad person. But <laughs> I played Rocket League yesterday because that's what I do. And today. And actually, no, maybe it was just today. I think I played a game yesterday. Anyway, uneventful. <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> But um, the, that season update thing, those banners, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so the do you season, want to explain it? Yeah, the season rewards. So every, every season, every competitive season, once it ends, you get a reward based on how high you ranked up. And this one was these banners, which I think appear like after you score and on the main menu. And it's like it shows your rank and... It's like on your scoreboard. It's like around you, but it's like this really, really. I don't think it's going to be on the scoreboard, though. I don't know. I thought that's what it's for. It's for like this. It's for around your name at the bottom, 
like when you're in a party and then mm-hmm. around the scoreboard. That's what that's how I mm-hmm. understood See, I it. I thought it was going to be like when you score a goal, your yeah, banner I thought, I comes thought it up. Was after oh, you score a goal, Cod, it shows Cod it at style, the bottom. like when someone kills you, their little banner comes up on COD. Oh no, I don't yeah. think it's that. I don't think it's that. That it, would be awful. Oh my I, god! I think that, that might be, be what it is. <laughs> I think if it's if just it on is, I literally quit. It's terrible. <laughs> Because I think the anyway, scoreboard they have dragons it. on them, so that's sweet, right? Oh God! Yeah. Like so, Jinko Jean style, so badass. Yeah, yeah. this is like the that's sexually so, yeah. in front of Jinko <laughs> Jeans. So I'm not in love with the design of the rewards. Some of them aren't bad. I'm just excited to actually get banners in. I like the idea. I think it's kind of cool, especially if eventually they open the door to customizations. To and what a, customization? Like actually, draw there's your other banners. Own or actually, stuff. they describe. Yeah, they. They, um, one of the developers commented on one of the Reddit threads and said that not o- it's not just the reward banners. There's also going to be free ones released that are, you know, different colors. And there are some that you can choose the color of, kind of like how you pick your car color. Okay. So, well, that's all right. So, so I can't have like a dick and balls banner though. I can't draw I my would, own. I, I don't Say think so. No. Okay. That's there a pretty is none safe now. bet well, that that is not, I'm not the case. Playing. <laughs> you could always mod your game and then stream with your own custom mm. banners like people do mm-hmm. with car skins. You see, it's, it's they, not, yeah. it just, it doesn't matter unless I can just have it waggling at people after I've scored all. Waggling. Score waggling. Score waggling. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> you know. Tom's just hanging down there. Like, with that I, I think people what you usually want, see I think when I score want. on them. Waggle oh. cam. <laughs> I think what you want is like a, a goal explosion where just a testes drop and they go Boop. Oh. <laughs> that would be perfect the guy who's stuck oh, in goal is like no it's in my oh, sorry oh god yeah. anyway right. we digress digress but but yeah <laughs> there's that um, that's not really much to say about that we play that every week that's nothing new but the thing that was new and we all played this game is dirty bomb Yes. Yeah. Which was, I'll tell you what, going into this, I wasn't really excited to play it, to be honest. I was just like, okay, it's free, community game, we'll play this for a while, it might be a little fun. But I actually had a great time with it that night, playing it. Yeah, hmm. so I didn't come in thinking it's going to be terrible, because my big thing is, if we're all playing together, it'll still be fun, and if it's bad, mm-hmm. we make fun of how bad it is. Yeah. But holy right. shit, this game actually, actually if you good. have a full party... The strategies you can do and teamwork you can do. Oh my God, we wrecked. I it think we lost so two much. matches all night as a team. It was so much <laughs> goddamn fun. I so want yeah, to do we this again with great. everyone. We had, I think, eight people in total playing. Uh, we rotated mm-hmm. out a couple times, so it was a good time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, was. I actually played after the community game, which never happens for me. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I was trying to get more people in. I was like, guys, come on, Dirty Bomb. And they're like, Rocket League. And I was like, but, but, but. <laughs> Now, alone or with we'll two people, again. Um, it doesn't really work so well. Uh, it's it's yeah. still a good time, but there is no communication, no cooperation. Yeah. The it's, community it's all about that. Oh, they're, they're rushing this side. Everybody, what? Oh, I need healing. I need ammo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I got your ammo here. Playing, We're dropping double was, healing over here. Playing medic right. was basically worthless, but I, I went well, into this. I love ex- the medic. No, no, no. It, the medic without was a party, great. Without a party. See, but her shotgun, she's so OP. She she is. This is the most offensive support character I've ever to say, played in yeah, my life. I was going to say, that's <laughs> like the most the firepower I've ever seen in a medic before. I love the medic. It's just, it, without a party, without people telling you, hey, uh, I'm going in, can you cover me? Can you watch my back? It's mostly useless. Ah, uh, true, true, true. But I, can I, see I, that. I went into yeah. this like expecting a totally trash game because free to play, <laughs> it's been out for a while, it's on Steam, yeah. like, you're like, eh. It's, I guess it's free. So this this is two games in a row that we've played hero based free to play. And I like, Mm -hmm. I like how gigantic did it more, but I do like this league of legends, rotate the heroes thing for free. I do like that. So you can get a feel of the heroes before you buy. Dirty bomb. We should probably describe the game a little bit. Oh God, yes, thank you. That was, (laughs) by the way, Dirty bomb is a first person shooter. It's a class based first person shooter with uh objectives so it's not just kill the enemy it's take do this bomb to this thing and then wait for it to blow up and the other team has to try to defuse it and and Mm -hmm. return the bomb before it blows up well it's got a little team fortress a little bit of team fortress 
a little uh, bit of CSGO. Little, go, it's it's assault mode from of. Unreal Tournament 2004, but made class go. based. Yeah, it's you have but, multiple mm, objectives. You, you, you accomplish one, you get more time to accomplish a second. You get more time to accomplish a third. Mm-hmm. There's actual stages, and if you don't advance past a stage, you lose instantly. And yeah. if you want to win as the attacker, you have to make it through all three stages. It, I am so surprised. It was such a good time, and this will be one of the things that, uh, that I play a lot of. One thing that really yeah. surprised me was um, how well the game does technically. There, there are some weird mm-hmm. design choices, but from a sheer as I knock my microphone all over the place, from a sheer technical <laughs> perspective, the game ran at at least 60 FPS at all times. I experienced no frame drops whatsoever. The controls mm-hmm. were smooth as butter. The gunplay felt right. It felt like it yeah. was directly connected to the mouse. It yeah. played very, very, very well. I was actually well. surprised at how good it felt to play the gunplay specifically. Yes, it, it, it was felt, actually, it felt great. So I don't know how to describe it great, but... Some shooters, you just shoot and you see the mark is okay. Other shooters, even on a mouse, you shoot the person and you think like you feel a thud. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that sound, the, the that hit just detection, feel. The hit detection seemed good. It didn't seem laggy. Uh, I, I was playing a, it, a sniper class, which I, I don't, I love playing sniper classes, but I hate playing sniper classes. I, I love playing them, but I hate the way they're implemented because it's always plotting and slow. And in a game like Dirty Bomb, I'm like, oh, everything's moving really fast. I'm going to play this really fucked up slow sniper. That's not the case. You've basically got a semi-automatic sniper rifle that is hyper accurate, and you can do a good bit of damage with them. Yeah, it's... And also something about this game. This is not a... When I said CSGO, I don't want to draw too many comparisons because it's not yeah, hyper-realistic with damage. <clears throat> it, it is arcadey. People are spongy. Very yeah. arcadey. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's not in a bad way. It's not like, oh, I totally shot him. He should be dead. Yeah. You can take some hits, but you know when you kill the person. Yes. And yeah. you expect people to take hits. Like, you run up someone with a shotgun, unless you're, like, headshot them with a shotgun point blank. Yeah. You're putting two mm-hmm. in them. It was, it was what, a lot of fun. what I'm starting to realize through a lot of, through doing these um, only and we've only been doing them recently is that like some of these games are a lot better than they look. Yes. Yeah. And you yeah. know, and, and a, a lot of times I'm like, eh, don't even bother. But it looks like, I mean, I think we're going to find a lot of gems throughout these podcasts. So just like, you know, everyone get in those. They're, they've been a blast so far. Yeah. The free to plays. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's a lot of stigma with free to play, but some of these are really well implemented. I mean, really well. Yeah. You may not have a full gamut of characters and such, but you still can enjoy and you can still be just as effective. It, um, yeah. after, after the first night playing the second and third days, it was a, a little bit grindy. What I felt like the first day they give you so many bonuses and like, oh, hey, here's 30,000 points. Just go, go hog wild, go crazy. And after that, yeah. the bonuses start, you know, trickling in. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it is. It is a little bit grindy. I understand why they do that, but it's not enough to make me want to stop playing the game. As a matter of fact, it's enough to make me want to go, OK, I can throw five bucks at a hero. And it and- didn't seem none of them seemed overly powerful. And yeah, yeah. And the fact that. The, the only one that stood out to me as that I got killed by a lot was the medic. Yes. Ironically. Yep. And that is the one you start with. So it's not, it's not a problem. And this, that one is different than gigantic. And I feel gigantic. You could earn the heroes relatively quick with dirty bomb. After that initial cash, they give you you're buying or you're playing for a month to buy a character. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. But it's free. So, I mean, you can't really, Beggars can't be choosers. I didn't look. I'm wondering if they have like an unlock pack where if you like this game, give us 30 bucks. We give you all the heroes. I didn't see one. I don't know. I, I know they have bundles like they've got like the strike force pack, which gives you a bundle yeah. of heroes and then some extra shit. But I don't think they have a, you know, ultimate purchase mode. I, I, I wish I more free to play games would do that. I yes. did notice that some of the characters were different prices than others. Which was yes. weird to me, and then, but like a lot of them were ten bucks a piece. Yeah, I'm I don't, not, I'm not familiar. Bucks. I'm not familiar with pricing models for stuff like this because I don't really play games that do this or have in the past. But that seems kind of pricey to me for I agree. a character. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. In a game that has probably twenty five, thirty characters, five bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. That's like hundred fifty dollars if you try to unlock the entire game. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. five bucks is I think the lowest that someone was, wasn't it? 
Um, yeah, or was for, it, or was it was like three dollars. I, I think there was some three fifty heroes, but I'd need to look again. Um, but don't let this distract what we're trying to say. Underline no, this game a, is it, good. It's a great game. It's it was a lot you don't of fun. Have to buy a thing to have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can you can install this, play it, and then. You know, leave it forever if you want to, or keep playing with the free heroes. Um, that's kind of, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the thing I had I had an issue with on both of the games, is that you got in there, and you wanted to play a certain a certain thing, a certain a certain build, and you and you just couldn't unless you, <laughs> unless probably... you once selected in the very beginning, and with Gigantic, it's like, they give you uh, like a handful of random ones, and then I wanted to try out some of the other ones, but I can't. So... Mm. Just is what it is. So they may rotate through. That's the big thing. Some of these games rotate through. Gigantic. Other games, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this one will rotate or not. If they do, that's great. They should. I believe they do. Because I they, like they had the, a timer on the heroes. Yeah. You could. I like an, the idea of being able to try out a hero before you buy it, if you have to buy the hero to have it. Yeah. I, I mm. do think that right, um, right. For, these, for this style of free-to-play games... Uh, they should let you do unlimited bot matches with all heroes. But if you want to take them online, you've got to buy them. And I think that would give you the ability to test out a bunch of heroes, not feel limited by time trials, and actually, you know, get your feet wet and figure out, oh, wow, this guy could really work great in this situation with this team comp. I think I'm going to go buy him. Uh, instead of the, well, right. I don't know, I only had a day and a half with him because it's been a really busy week, so I don't know if I want to spend five bucks on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that actually would be a really good feature. Super good feature. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all you've done this week, though, right, Adam? Yeah, that's been it. It's been light. Tom, you Rick? ran You ran Lost and Found this week. I did. Yeah, I did. tell us about that. <sighs> it was also a game called Ballistic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so now, now uh, next week's game will also be called <laughs> Ballistic. We just have to find one. Or find make one it. spelled or, or cleverly. It. Yeah. They'll all be ballistic. With a Q-U-E at the end. S-T-I-Q-E. Yeah, yeah. that'll work. That'll work. It's uh, the French <laughs> version of the stick fighter shooter. Ballistic. 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 Ha-ha. we got to Guys, the French government has just banned 72 pin connector. Damn. Oh, uh, God. shit. Yes, so also sorry. Quebec. And as Dobby said, before you get into the game, I will say, and I agree with it, it looked like a Newgrounds game. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it did. So... Lost and found. Yes. Did you yeah. lose your train of thought? No. You better I'm, find it. I'm trying to figure out a, a way to say this. That's not so bad. Um, <laughs> I kept looking at the, the time that I've been streaming on the bottom of OBS. I was just like, I looked. I'm like, oh, my God. It's only been 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, no. fuck, it's only been it's 30 minutes. Games, so. Oh, fuck. It's only been 45 minutes. I've got at least 15 before I can cut this. Yeah. But, and the reason for that is a good reason. Some games just suck at the start. Yeah. And it, okay. Yeah. So this, this game didn't absolutely suck. It just kind of sucked. It sucked enough that I wanted to stop playing it. So, from an outside <laughs> wow. looking in, before you get into any description, yes. You were playing the first level, and it looked like it's going to be strictly 2D. Duck around, do stuff. I see you going through this little area. Yep. Okay. Have the stream up. I watch for a little bit. I walk away, get something to eat. I come back 30 minutes later. It looks like you're in the same fucking level. Yes. Yeah. So are you? Uh, oh, yes oh, and God. no. So so let me let me get into how, how I went through this. Uh, so Ballistic is a game that you look at it and you're like, oh, cool. I'm going to run around as a stick figure and blow up other stick figures. And it's going to be like some cool little flash game that I can just be ultra violent and have fun. And the the story at the front, if there is a story, like apparently there's an evil corporation and the guy wants out and they're like, well, you're not going to get out. And he's like, fuck you. Yeah, I will. And then that's why they're all killing each other, right? That's literally the entire story. Oh, my God. Um, so he's like, there's only one way out of this. I've got to kill them all. And I'm like, oh, right, cool. I'm going to murder everyone. Except the game in the tutorial is like, oh, hey, here's how you do like snake cams under the door. Here's how you kill people silently. I'm like, holy shit, wait. You literally just spent the first part of this game telling the story about this dude who's going to kill everyone as violently as possible. And now you're saying it's a stealth game? <laughs> oh no so the game has got two very different modes of play there's the hardcore action mode and then there's the stealth mode and some levels you can mix them both some levels is he heavy stealth the controls leave a lot to be desired at the start it says mm. hey play with an xbox controller but that's that's not part of the problem i wasn't 
But I wanted to kill a guy silently. So you need to crouch and come up on him and then knife him because it's a stealth level. But I was standing in front of a doorway, and when I hit down to crouch, it put me through the door instead of letting me crouch. Mm. Uh, to shoot... P- overloaded to, buttons. To yep. use grenades, you have to switch to your knife and then press your grenade button to throw a grenade. To open vents, you have to put and switch to your knife and then press the action button. You can't use the actions or the gadgets without putting away your gun first. Oh, wow. It is a oh very arbitrary not decision. A very good, in, yeah, not a very good design decision. Shooting? So I was expecting, okay, I've got, I've got my WASD that works. Like, spacebar is going to be shoot, right? No, it's the right arrow key. What? Yeah. <laughs> How do you move to the right? <laughs> with with uh, D. So you're WASD oh, 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 and pressing out. the right arrow key. But even if you're facing left, it's still the right arrow key to shoot. Oh, oh so God. that's just fire. It's yeah. not direction of fire. It is it's fire. Fire. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. So it's a pain in the ass to play. Why and, didn't they and do space bar? I don't know. I don't. And I'm, I'm trying not to like dive into the controls and try to remap everything to be sane because this is lost and found. I'm supposed to present the game as it was designed. Yes. And as it's designed was seriously fucking flawed. As yeah. Yeah. So, so like if I loaded up Skyrim for lost and found, if I loaded up with like 37 different mods, that's not really the point. <laughs> right. Um, they had two modes of gunplay, simple and advanced. And I started on simple, which is you press right to fire and you hit R to reload and that's that's it it's it's okay um the game wants you to slow down uh because in advanced you actually have four different magazines for your gun um and when you reload you have to like press r and that starts the reload process then you press down to take out the old magazine and put it away press oh my god and then press another (laughs) button to to you know pull your hammer on your gun and then you're ready to shoot again which is actually a whole lot of fun in the middle of a firefight trying to get this cool like reload thing down. That mm-hmm. was a good thing. I actually liked it. It reminded me a lot of active reload in Gears of War. It's yes. not just hit button. It's hit button, go through a process. Um, That's it, cool. It did work pretty well, uh, but the rest of the game was just shit. Yeah, Dobby's in chat, <laughs> chat saying pretty much the game was best when you said fuck it and went ham. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Yeah. If that was the way the game was supposed to be played the whole time, if you just went nuts and did exactly what I assumed you would, playing some sort of super violent stick fighter game, it would have been great. Yes. But they didn't build it that way. When you have a game appear with all this blood and gore and it's stick figures, you think it's going to be like Aztez, where it's yeah. balls to the wall, action, blood, gore, kill. That's what I went in prepared mm-hmm. to do it. And then they're like, oh, hey, here's how you stealth kill guys. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck am I going to stealth kill people for? I've got grenades. It's like stealthy. Even, or- even throwing a grenade, um, it was... <sighs> The advanced controls, for as cool as they were, were actually kind of sucked. So you pull a grenade, and then you hit like left to pull out the pin, and then back, and then up to throw it. Um, except it's not back facing your character. It's literally like the right arrow key. So even if you're facing the wrong way, you still have to do the thing the opposite of what you thought it was going to be to throw it. It was it, uh, it's so a they decent bound, idea. They bound actions to directions that weren't actually directions they were just actions yeah so that sucks if if they did it like oh uh, hey you press n h and j to do these things it wouldn't have fucked me up so much but it's bound to arrow keys those have implicit mm-hmm. meaning that the designers ignore yeah this game could have Ugh. been better um but it's not i don't regret having it in my steam library but i do regret losing an hour of my life to it it is up on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. YouTube.com slash 72 pin connector. And you can hear me go, oh, that's weird. It's also <laughs> right down there at the bottom left. Uh, go check out any of those if you would like. For those of you watching, otherwise, oh. ignore what I just said. Okay. It's bottom right, though. Yeah, bottom. Sorry, I pointed left to get to bottom right because of the mirroring. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's the controls. Your controls were fucked. Yeah, over there. We, get it. Yeah. we get it. We did directions for actions. Yeah. And it fucked that, me up. It did. Fine. It really did. Uh, so yeah, I played, I played some ballistic and that sucked. Uh, one thing I played that didn't suck was Doom 2016. I'm going through to higher difficulty. I decided to chill, uh, try to get my OBS settings under control, which I think I did. Uh, my poor laptop can't do 1080p. Poor hmm. laptop. 
Uh, but Doom, Doom fucking rules. Uh, the only bad thing about Doom that I've seen so far is when you kill the enemies, the music stops. Really? Yeah. When, when Just you, glory I, kills I give you a kill. solution to this, Tom. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> right. so, so, like, you get into an area, and you pop the gore nest, and then hell literally breaks loose, and you're just murdering everything to this awesome metal soundtrack, and everything is dead, and then the music stops. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, it's like encounter so, music, and then everything's dead, and then it goes back to <laughs> environment music. And, and I hate that, because Doom. Right. So, for $10 on tips. any Here's audio player... Yeah. So, so Adam, Adam Here's gave the me the solution to this. <laughs> Go into the game options... Turn the music volume down all the way, and then start playing the game OST in the background. See, that's, <laughs> that's really so the best going. way to play. Yeah, that is actually the only game soundtrack I've ever purchased. Uh, yeah, I've got it on I, Google Music. It's I, fantastic. Yeah. It's also on Amazon I, Music, and I'm sure Spotify and everything. You had to round that list, out for your own spell being, didn't you? I'm just saying, it's it's <laughs> everywhere. God damn you. Repping the brand. Rep the anyway, brand. <laughs> yes. Um, awesome soundtrack. Do anything you can to listen to that. Um, I did chill out with some CSGO. It was good. I, I chilled. It was fun. Chilled. Um, Dirty Bomb, as we said. Splatoon 2, I finally got into ranked. It only took you four fucking months. <laughs> like two, but. I, I, don't, I don't play it that often, but. You only need level 10. Yeah, I don't play it that often. Level 10! I got that in like four hours! I, I have a life. I don't play it that often, Eric. I have a life, Eric. I have a life. I go out. <laughs> I do things. I, I go to bars and dance in tiny towns. And parents what? hate me. I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't want to see it anymore. <clears throat> okay. Um, now that I've done, I've done my dancing for the day, um, I forget what it's called. Is it Rainmaker? What's the one where you take like the golden fish yeah, thing? Yeah, it's and, Rainmaker. Okay, so there's a golden fish thing in the center, and you take it and you try to run it basically to your opponent's end zone. So there's this constant back and forth American football style push uh, with this weird golden fish thing. It's Halo One Bomb. It is so much fucking fun. That is my favorite game mode, and I really wish Splatoon would just give me the ability to say, I want to play Rainmaker. I hate that game mode. That game mode is the worst. Uh, second. Really? It's probably yeah, it's middle. I, Tower I control is the worst. Tower control sucks. Whatever their King of the Hill thing is sucks. That is great. Turf I, War, <laughs> um, um, the King of the Hill is amazing. Turf War is good. I hate King I of the Hill. I didn't mean Turf War. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. I wish more games would do this. I actually, way back in the day, I made an Unreal Tournament map with um the flag set to opposite teams so your objective was to grab the flag and run it forward to your flag to score the point it's basically reverse ctf i'll still call out to my favorite um fps halo has had that since day one and continues to have that it's great it's a fun <laughs> mode it is great it's really fucking weird because you're running into a like dug down defending team when they know you're coming yeah it's oh and my they God, know it's... you're coming is the worst thing yeah it's so much fun um, also, that was so much fun is uh, loading up some internet radio with some good old country tunes, putting on your trucker <laughs> hat and playing American Truck Simulator. Okay, before you go any oh, further, <laughs> this is a big um, call out to Predatrix, one of the guys in the community. He has been playing this while in Discord, chilling with us, and we gave him so much shit. Yep. So much shit, <laughs> and he defended himself so much that we picked it up on the Humble Bundle. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, American wow. Truck Simulator. All uh, right, basically, so these, these simulator games seem to be kind of a meme, in a way. I've seen them joke-gifted, uh, but since you've actually played it now, get, like a non- a non-joking, silly, like, what do you actually think about it? I had way more fun than I think I was <laughs> expecting to. So the game is good. <laughs> it's the, a good game. The game is legitimately good. All the simulator games are actually really good. But we had seven of us in a Discord, I think, playing it all at once. Mm -hmm. um, Dobby actually clipped out one of the things I did. If you want to go check it out, it's up in our clips on our Twitch. But um, with seven of us in there... Just talking about what we're doing, what we're hauling, what we're struggling with. Oh, I got fuck some, the, I got some gravel. Oh fuck! The cops just got me for speed. <laughs> Heading out to Nevada, I'm in Sacramento right now. It sounds stupid, but it was super chill, super relaxed, and just talking with everyone, having a good time. This is Big Niner to Redbird. Redbird, what's your four oh four? Okay, there was none of that. So we would have muted that some bitch right away. <laughs> 
but it was it was so much fun. Um, I literally I did load up some shitty country internet radio station, <laughs> put it on low in the background, and I played American Truck Simulator while drinking a beer, and it was. It was relaxing. It was fun. Don't drink and drive. What, what are hey, you doing? Hey, that's, that's the only way to play American Truck Simulator. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I did see that, uh, Irk, you decided to test the limits of the simulator by driving the wrong way on the highway. Yes. Um, anyone who is in <laughs> Twitch currently, Dobby just linked that in the chat. But yes, I was <laughs> able to um, go the wrong way onto an entrance ramp, and the cops didn't give a shit. <laughs> Wow. I totally oh, fucked up everything. Yep. Like it got Not so bad. Not a simulator that I confirmed. Drive. Game is garbage. Garbage no, game. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it was fun though. I mean, seriously, the game is fun. It, it is. I did not expect to have a good time. I was like, oh, truck simulator. Oh god, that's gonna be bad. American truck simulator. Oh, that's gotta be worse. At least, <laughs> at least when you call something European, you imagine like. A, a little bit regal, maybe maybe not so redneck, but America truck simulator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Euro truck simulator, I think a little S10 pulling a tiny trailer with a push mower. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you're listening to the Who. That's the only difference. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good time, and we all were on chat. Like I think four or five people were playing American Truck Simulator at once, which was just fantastic. A whole lot. It was it was great. Um, the game's fun. It is. It For is. T- uh, call out. I think it's still on there. Humble Bundle. Ten dollars is the top. You get that. You get a few other games that you will be seeing on Lost and Found, no doubt. Yep. But other than that, that's all I've been hauling. <laughs> really? <God>. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Wow. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so while you weren't driving the other opposite way on the highway, what did you do? <laughs> who, did, who did you murder? That didn't feel strained at all, but nice no. try. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to read our internal chat. Uh, hey, throw it to me, Josh, last. Yeah, Josh then says me last. Transition. Irk, you <laughs> games now. Irk, play so, games. Yes. <laughs> so smooth. Yeah. Uh, we're, 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 we're great at this. this. I am, I am a professional. Pros. I'm a goddamn professional. Um, so after American Truck Simulator, something Tom left out, is we did play a little more of something else. Um, we went to play some Jackbox. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, nice. I'm labeling it <clears throat> Jackbox because um, we played a little bit of Jackbox 2. Um, one of the games plays well on stream, uh, because, you know, it's not bad, but we got Google fucked by a rando who jumped in stream with us because it was a trivia game. Oh, fuck that oh, guy. No. <laughs> and when someone gets every question right, an entire trivia game, and there were some obscure fucking questions. <laughs> yeah. So the game was oh, Fibbage. Yeah. It's Boulder Dash. Where they give you something, yeah. everyone makes up a lie. They have the real answer in there, and you try to guess the real answer. This dude was putting his lies as the same description as the real answer, and then answering it right every time. So, so fuck them. We, we even called them out on stream, but they had the balls to just sit there and not say anything in chat. Like, they kept playing. And kept doing it. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, wow. uh, so this, this dude is cheating. Fuck him. Oh, wow, I bet his EP is huge. Oh, wow, look at this fucking <laughs> idiot, guys. And then no, no reaction, just straight face the whole thing. I don't, wow. I don't get it. But um, so that one's not bad. Uh, the rest of the Jackbox 2 doesn't seem to be as well of streaming as 3. So then we transitioned to 3 and just did some TKO and stuff. We're not going to go nice. into details because we all know what they are, Tom. We they, all know how to play them. They, they sucked at TKO. Just going to point that out. And TKO that's was a lot of fun. <laughs> that's where we're leaving really like the TKO one. discussion. So about TKO, let's go into deep, deep details about every T-shirt that we created. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. So um, we're we're gonna bounce off of that right now. No. Um. So outside of that, you know, you had some of the same old uh, Rocket League, blah de blah. Um. Did a little bit of Mount Your Friends. Um. Proto Tricks and Dobby. Dobby and I did some Mount Your Friends. It's a fun game. Good time kill. We did it as a community game one night. We probably won't ever touch it again for that. But um, yeah, it's a fun time. Uh, did some speed runners. Had a randos jump in with us from stream. And, you know, we've been playing speed runners for a good bit. 
thought I was pretty good. You also cheated. My speedrunners? Yeah, I saw them. <laughs> never cheat. <laughs> oh, I saw that too, wall. actually. Whoa, what'd you do? No, that wasn't me through the wall. That was d through the wall. No, I saw on d oh, stream you were through the wall. No, the, the game bugged the <laughs> fuck out. It really and did. for everyone, oh, wow. it showed them being in different parts of the map, so it was through the wall the entire time. It was really weird. That's awesome. Wow. But this rando jumped in, and he was so good. He would get so far ahead, stop, turn around, run behind us, and then start again. Yeah, it was <laughs> fucking nuts. It was a show off. <laughs> well, because he wanted to keep it going. He was, was like, so good. He was God. like, oh, I don't, I don't want to ruin the game for everyone. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna win and let them know I'm gonna win, but I'm gonna keep the game going. So he just oh, is that like a humble brag kind of, kind of nice. thing. Yeah, yeah basically. absolutely a humble brag. So <laughs> he wrecked us. Um, I played uh, some Kerbal. Uh, for all of you who have not watched or know, I run a every Tuesday a Kerbal stream outside of this Tuesday. Got some prior engagements. But the objective to the moon and back. Finally, the fourth week. I've made it to the moon. You got it. Now, nice. Did, did you recreate the NASA experiment so where they easy. basically like blasted something into the moon as hard as they could and blew it up? Uh, yeah. Yes. And mine had an astronaut in it. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. So, oh, so you outdid NASA. <laughs> got it. Awesome. Yeah, nice. Jebediah is now dead. Oh, oh, you can't do that. No, no you have to restart. I, I, Jebediah, I believe, is now officially dead. Oh. <laughs> no. Erase your save. We need, restart. We need a funeral service. We do. <laughs> launch him yeah. off into space launch his body off into space do it i mean again. it's launched it is launched into <laughs> yeah. space go fetch it bring it Relaunch back launch it have into the space. service and then launch it on your own terms <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you should just terms. launch a headstone launch a headstone into yeah. uh, into space and then when that lands then he has a grave <laughs> and it's then perfect. i go there every other flight uh pay tribute yep Press F. Yeah, but you have to make it Press there Press F first. to pay respect. Yeah. Oh, fuck you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so probably about two more weeks is about all this is going to go. I Okay, for God's sake, I made it to the moon. I'm hoping in two weeks I'll be able to successfully land and make it back. Um, at that point, here's to hoping. Here's to hoping. Uh, we'll table it for a bit, but we'll be back at some point and we'll make it to Mars, motherfuckers. Wow. But nice. it was a good time. Um, everyone should jump in. Check it out. Tuesdays, seven o'clock. Not this Tuesday, next Tuesday, thanks to difficulties. Um, then also one thing I've been putting a fuck ton of time in. Horizon Zero Dawn has a new game plus again. mode. Yes, again. I beat the game back when it came out. I think like two days after Zelda released, I beat Zero Dawn. Um I started New Game Plus on the top difficulty. Oh. Yes. Oh, oh. okay. And I'm actually going through doing more side missions. And a lot of the side missions are throwaway, like one off, do this, do that, kill this, kill find that. Kill six guys, bring mm -hmm. back 20 apples. But some of them actually have some decent story, <laughs> some actual deep story. And I'm getting into some of those like, oh, this is kind of cool. Hmm. Um, also, top difficulty. You don't get as much healing as you as expect, and they do more damage as you as expect. I'm using a lot more stuff that I've never used before on a um, Zero Dawn game. Like, there's these rope casters that you can um, actually uh, tie things down with. And it was really interesting because you can tie them down, disable them. And then from that, you can get, like, all these critical hits on them when they're tied down. Hmm. Yes. Um, and that never had to do in the first game because it was just a lot easier. It was just, like, smashing them, essentially. Um, yeah, I... <sighs> I love going through games on higher difficulties, uh, but I have issues like jumping right to the hardest because I did that with Doom recently and it was so fucking hard. It was so fucking hard. I literally like in the first little area just with the imps, I couldn't get past it. They kept murdering me. Uh, and apparently the hardest difficulty on Doom is so hard that you can't actually use the glory kills anymore because you would... Uh, you stand still for too long. They murder you when you do the animation for the glory kill. It's nuts. It's pretty nuts. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going through different shit. Animals are crazy. Um, and some of these side quests, they're taking me areas I've never been. Like there's these tall neck things oh. that climb up to the top and exposes the map. There's one mm -hmm. I've never done before. I went to do it and I realized the reason I've never probably done it, it is surrounded by all these mean, high level sons of bitches that just wanted to rip your fucking face off. Nice. It took me like hmm. an hour to do it. 
So yeah, either way, I'm running through it because uh, in Oct or November, the new DLC comes out. So I want to be 100% in on New Game Plus when the new DLC comes out to uh, just kind of enjoy it. What if the DLC is like, hey, we know you like this game hard, so we made this even harder. If you're on easy, it'll go to hard mode. If you're on the hardest mode, it'll go to fuck you mode and erase your save file. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Conker's Bad Fur Day. Like, yeah, <laughs> basically. Conker's Bad Fur Day. Well, that God, one wasn't that, that hard. Game. It was just like, if you beat the game 100% and all, all three save files, it erases your whole cartridge. Oh. Really? I did not yeah, know did that. Yeah, you not know that? <laughs> yeah, if, you had, if you played Conker's Bad Fur Day and you and you 100% all three sa uh, save locations, it erases mm. the entire thing. And you have to start Damn. Again. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> that is pretty rad. <laughs> um, and I do want to call this out to Soul real quick. Uh, the reason I did not do is I don't start on the hardest difficulty is on especially games like that where there's a chance of a decent story. I want to play the game at normal because I figured that's how the developer intended it. And then I also want to be able to enjoy the story. Um, if you have it on the hardest difficulty, a lot of times you get disengaged from the story because you have to run through an area so many times because you keep dying and you have to do this and that. And this game had such a good story that I wanted to keep pushing through it. Like there's people I know on different podcasts that are saying the story got ruined for them because they took a break to play Zelda. And then when they came back, they just weren't in the story. They don't remember yeah. what happened. I, so I, I usually start games on story mode or medium or easy just to get through it. I, I did that with uh, Deus Ex. So I just wanted to see the great, awesome story and do the more RPG things instead of the challenge things. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, I typically go I'm, normal. I'm one of those people I never... I, will, I won't play a game through twice pretty much 100% of the time. So I'll, I'll just pick the difficulty depending on what type of game it is. So right. like... And I, I just typed this in chat, but I guess I could just say it. But um, when I played through The Last of Us, my first playthrough was on the hardest difficulty. Um, not the one you unlock after you beat the game, but the hardest base difficulty. Because it's mm -hmm. a survival game, and you're constantly low on supplies. You're constantly extremely low on ammo, and it makes all right. the encounters more tense. It makes you think about what you're doing. You know, can I afford to use this item here, or do I need to try to play it safe and it just added so much to the game and yes. i think mm -hmm. anybody that played it through on like normal or easy the first time around thinking it, you they would just you know like the story i think they missed out a lot on some of the experience yes and you, you, what you just hit on was a double-edged sword is mm -hmm. your first time if you're only going to play it once what do you want to focus on do you want to just really entrench yourself in the story or do you yeah. really want to well, play the game for what it might be I played through on yeah. normal, and I, I do feel like I missed out. Yeah, on the hard, yeah. I, what Adam said is right. I and played on normal and hard, the hardest difficulty after I unlocked it, day and mm -hmm. fucking night. Absolutely, and it's just uh, it really just depends on the game. That specific game, because it's such a survival, you know, oriented game. I think it needs to be played on hard. But there are probably a lot of games that are story driven games that you could just, you know, stick it on easy so you don't have to, you know bang your head on the table trying to get the whole story and just kind of run through it and relax. I, uh, I need to get our, our weekly quota in. I think Dark Souls should have a hard mode. Okay. <laughs> you, you can drink now. I think the that's only uh, game... Isn't that New Game Plus, like, 14? Yeah, something I like that. I think that's right. Because, well, well apparently, uh, if we're going to talk Dark Souls real quick, um, <laughs> apparently, did. like, it, it scales okay. Like, apparently, like, New Game Plus, like, I did New Game Plus 4, I think, on Dark Souls 1. And apparently, it scales pretty normal, like, mm -hmm. once you get to that point. But there's another breaking off point where you can't possibly get any better, and everything gets really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's somewhere, like, around 10. But anyway, Done with Dark Souls. I did it. I did it. I'm so happy. <laughs> Man, I had something I was going to say, too, and now I'm completely... Yep. I was wondering if we'd get through the whole cast and not mention Dark Souls. Nope. That would have been kind of neat. Probably not. We, we oh, skipped one this of these week because yeah. Josh is so ill. Yeah, there's one... One of these days... All right, so let's make it a personal goal for a 72-pin connector. Have at least one podcast where Dark Souls and Rocket League are not even mentioned. It was almost going to be easy because I was just going to say, Adam, you and I will run one. 
And then you said Rocket League. Yeah. See, yeah. I can that's go. Not happen. I don't know if two I can out go of the three people in this channel it. are wearing Rocket League t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if I can pull that off, but there is one game <laughs> I will say real quick that I always play in the top difficulty first time through. Oh, Halo. Because I the don't. story, you, don't. you actually don't get all of the stuff. Well, I guess the first one was a joke, but a, after the first game, there is extra cinematics at the very end for legendary oh. mode. Oh, oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, neat. Yes. Hmm. So you that guys makes didn't sense. know that? No. No. I've never uh, been. I mean, I played I, Halo. I've, I've played through. I think, <laughs> that's how everyone Halo. knew that there was going to be a Halo 4 after Halo 3. Hmm. Oh, uh, see, I played Halo two, I just assumed three, that my, and Reach that, all the way through, but I never even touched Legendary mode. I don't think. I just always assume there's a next Halo game because people like money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people I, what I mean, is, isn't that weird? Well, for the next Halo game after three, wasn't four. That, right. That's why I'm saying yeah, everyone knew there was, was going uh, to be a four because of the way okay. three ended, even okay. though that oh, wasn't the next oh, game. Oh, oh, oh. Because okay. in Legendary mode, you see the pillar, or not the pillar, because the pillar was destroyed, but another huge class carrier drifting in space towards a huge metal planet which ended up being where the um forerunners are at hmm. well i don't know hmm. how much you guys follow halo hmm. oh i know i've read the books yeah it's really cool i was about to say i read i read one of the books in high school i re- that is probably my well it's actually i think the only shooter with a really good story to it but i think it was like I read one, or I played one i read all the books and it was it was great and then i played two and it was such a disappointment Story wise, it was so trash. I don't think the story was trash. The story that it told really helped because later you see the division in the covenant that the covenant is not actually this one thing, it is a conglomerate of species that have a lot of politics. Yeah, they could have done that in like so many ways, but that's that's, that's Halo. Yeah, uh, either way, there's not any other real shooters with stories. Half Life. Half Life. <laughs> Half Life has a great story. Half Life, the entire series You're has an amazing a story. Yeah, the They're, entire. I'm talking about Half Life One, Half Life Two, Episode One, Episode Two, and now some weird random fan fan fiction on the ex lead writer's blog. I can't consider great it an story. open franchise like a franchise that I count. If it had really like two major installments and that was it. That's all you need. That's how good it is. No, that's not all you need because everyone's been bitching for more. Yeah, so it's right. not that's all true. you need. That's also, true. There was also the Bioshock series. Excellent stories. Yep. First person shooters. <clears throat> uh, mm-hmm. Bioshock Infinite story was particularly good. Yeah. Borderlands. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, doesn't Borderlands have a story? Uh, it's kind of kind of got a fun story. I think, it's, I think it's like murder yeah. everyone and unlock the vault. Oh no, you unlocked the vault. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's and right. That's, that's, oh, that's no, the, you've done that's the, the thing. story. Yeah. Don't do the thing. I did the thing. That's a great oh, story. He, did it. he did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second now one. we got to do the other thing. The second one. This handsome dude, like you got to kill. And then in the prequel, this handsome re- dude's I, helping you. <laughs> yeah, basically. I really did like the story in 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 Far Cry Three, though. I I enjoyed that. It wasn't Far Cry like one had top a great tier story. writing, but I, I never liked any there. Far Cry game. Far Cry game after one. Did you ever play three? Um, I think so. I think so. Three was probably, a good ride. I enjoyed lot. that one. I played a little. Uh, bit. I no, I take it back. I played. I played a lot of two, and then I gave up on the series. Oh, mm-hmm. three's good. Three's was my personal favorite, and then after that, there's no point. <laughs> So yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So uh, Josh, yes, you have yeah. had a very fun, enjoyable week, right? Oh God. So wait, I'm, I'm looking yeah, on your list I've here. Been... Is is your sickness called urban terror? Is that what you were diagnosed with? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do, I was diagnosed with like acute urban terror. Urban terror? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what What do you do for that? What do you take? Like, I don't know. Like rural Sedative calmness. Or shankle, it was yeah that's it no i don't know i was really sick (laughs) and i'm still a little sick so i'm not like on the ball right now (laughs) but uh earlier in the week i did play one game that i really did enjoy back in the day it's kind of a throwback after playing dirty bomb especially i was like super into this whole wall jumping mechanic in dirty bomb we never we didn't really touch on that actually but i guess i could have jumped in earlier but i was really into this wall jumping mechanic and it really brought me back to this game i used to play really 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 shitty looking game 
<laughs> it did not age well, and it's still in development, which means it's still really crappy. Um, which but means it's I really just fun. Stop. No, it's actually really fun. It's a very core shooter, and I think that if you give it a shot, it's it you might actually enjoy yourself. It's um, it's just like a CS:GO clone, except you can wall jump and you can slide and you can you know climb on things, and it's really 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 fun. Um, just sort of like the the mechanics of it are are, are fantastic. I will we'll, I'll touch on it again, or I'll stream it. I streamed it one time. Uh, I think a couple people were it, were watching at that point. It's like really cool little parkour maps. It's a blast to play. But for the most part, this week I've just been freaking sick. So, oh. so I realized something, and that was that everything makes you a little bit more frustrated when you're sick. Yes. <laughs> like, for instance, I was sitting there. I was like, okay, you know what? I want to play a game. I don't have it in me to play Rocket League. I, can't, I don't have the focus for that. I don't have the focus for most of these games on my list. So let's just install a new game. So I was like, oh, Blood Dragon. You know, that was supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a good ride. Uh, I'm going to do Blood Dragon. I installed it, but I didn't install it. I had to install Uplay. Oh. And, then, and then I had to everyone's favorite game launcher and I didn't realize I had to and then I had to sign into my account and I have all my other like Far Cry like games in in uh, on Uplay so I have to log into that account and I'm like super frustrated at this <laughs> point I'm like I don't need this shit and I uninstalled Uplay I uninstalled Far Cry Blood Dragon and I did not play it and at some <laughs> point <laughs> I'm less frustrated I'll get to that but like Everything was frustrating. I jumped into PUBG. I'm like, oh, all right, sick. I'm going to play PUBG. I walked outside. I died. I'm like, I'm done with PUBG. And it <laughs> went like that through every single game I played. Just absolutely, oh, fr- absolute frustration, sickness. And I realized, like, I don't have a game installed that's good for that kind of time where I'm just like, I just need to veg out. You know, usually it's Rocket League for me, right? Like, mm-hmm. I just like veg out on Rocket League, I kick the ball around, and then I'm good. And I, but I don't have like an actual game that's just a veg out game. Yeah, for mm-hmm. me. And so I, I just, I just went, I just went through it over and over again through all these. I went like sitting, I sat here for like 45 minutes just going up and down through my library, up and down through the shopping list, and like something's got to work. So for you guys, like, do you have anything that you, would recommend a sick man <laughs> to oh, be playing yes. at a, yes, at a time do. of need. <laughs> I've got, right. I've got uh, several games, but I'll, I will let you guys go in first before I launch on my retro rampage. So I'm, <laughs> this is actually relevant to me too, because I'm starting to notice sometimes I'm just really tired and I kind of want to play video games, but I also don't really want to have to put a bunch of effort in. And then I like, I look at my games and it's like, a uh, heavy story based game survival horror game uh you know fast reaction time sports car soccer <laughs> first person competitive first person shooter uh hardcore roguelike and it's like all right is there something i could just play that doesn't require any skill <laughs> right, just, like, that's exactly relax. It. <laughs> something relaxing <laughs> so so my big thing for that i have really one game in one style um mm-hmm. so generally like a mario kart i really like those they're very light-hearted you don't have to be super aggressive you can turn down the difficulty and just go but honestly mmos if you're just got some grinding shit you want to do it's mindless yeah. you can just lay in bed with a laptop and just fucking click on a rock and mine that coal so you can eventually get to make your steel plates because they're the best experience per coal you can get in RuneScape and it's all good. I agree. The the last time I played Guild Wars 2, I was sick. I you just you load it up you're like I guess I guess I'll kill 20 rats. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Trade I think, skills I think and low, hit, low level kills. Yeah. They're great for sickness. It's great. Not not like hardcore yeah. wow raids or anything, but just like chill grind some mats some shit i don't know i guess i'll walk up that mountain oh look i get 10 xp for an exploration <laughs> bonus <laughs> so i think go when you're sick and you're just laying around and you don't feel like doing anything and you want to play a game i think a good thing to go for is hit those nostalgia games play like replay a game that you loved 
either as you were when you were a kid or something that you've beaten fairly recently, but you've already beaten the game, you know what to expect, and you loved it, and you want to experience it again. That those kind of games are good for that. Like you know, play through the original Metal Gear Solid a little bit. You don't have to play through the whole thing, but you know, it's something right. you can sit down and. Oh yeah, that I haven't played that in forever. I forgot about that little part. And oh, this hasn't aged well, but it's kind of cool anyway, and it's got its charm. And I go uh, so almost I exclusively retro titles. Oh yeah, I really? Bet. You're the you're yeah. the retro guy. Yeah, you actually have that's an emo directly dedicated to you being the <laughs> retro god. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. We need to we need to put that. Oh wait, we can't do that yet. As soon as we no, get yeah, like, like, a Twitch, Twitch partner or something, <laughs> we're, we're going to have like, more, <laughs> more emoji. If you like, or comment whatever. and subscribe, we'll eventually have uh, the emote on here for your viewing like, pleasure. Murder Drop it. a hydrogen Stab bomb it. on that subscribe button. <laughs> just <laughs> ruin it. Ruin it. Just, just for that emote. It. Just for that emote, please. Just, just fucking like hurricane that subscribe button. Bury it under its seven feet of water. Drown Dob- it. Dobby had one good reason why you shouldn't do nostalgia while you're sick. Because you pull up a what? game that you used to love, that you haven't played since you were a kid, and you realize it's fucking terrible, and then you feel worse. I've, I've never true. played a bad game. I've actually never had that happen. But the it, thing is, is the games that I <coughs> that I would play like that are games that I've played in multiple stages of my life. So it's not like I haven't played this in ten years. It's like oh, I haven't played this in a couple years, but I played it for the first time ten years ago or fifteen years ago or whatever. Yeah. So like Metal Gear Solid, like that's I've played that game you know, multiple times throughout the years. So I know what to expect. I know how it's aged. I know how it, you know, right. I know it's it, ins and outs. That's the era that worries me the most when you go back to that, yeah. like the 64 bit, the, the low polygon count the yes. attempt at being realistic back in 1993. Age <laughs> did not do any of them favors. No. <laughs> so, no. so the games I go back to, if I'm feeling like a little bit active, I'll, I'll fire up Mario 64 because it's a game I'm extremely familiar with. It's pretty chill. Um, Mm -hmm. you just go, you know, get a couple stars and be done and take a nap. Um, if (laughs) if I'm feeling like absolutely no energy, I'll fire up, um, an adventure game or an RPG. Ocarina of Time is my jam and it has been since I was a kid. You know, I can, I can fire up Ocarina and run through it in my sleep and it's just kind of a good, like drone out game. Throw on a podcast, I mean, like have a laptop with Netflix next to you and like, go through a dungeon an Ocarina of Time while idly watching Netflix. What kind of sick guy are you where you're trying to multitask while you're sick? Yeah, well, yeah. I've got to get through four <laughs> things running, six screens sprawled out. I'm, I'm not sure you guys I know how eventually. I controller like, in one hand, cell phone in the other hand. Yeah, I've, I've got I've to find dank <laughs> memes. I've got to get through a House of Cards somehow. And, and I want to play Zelda, so... Oh, I, I did forgot. eventually. I uh, still haven't seen the new season of House of Cards. Right? Oh, <laughs> it's lacking. I haven't seen any of them. V Dobby brings up uh, it's really Super Mario good. Sunshine. It's mm. just, oh yeah, that's just awesome. Dark Soul Invader brought up Metal Gear so- or Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, the hack and slash thing. Now I didn't really play that, but that's a perfect example of the type of game for something like this. Like if you've got Dynasty Warriors, you know, one through. 60 or whatever laying around somewhere that would be a good game for that i think yeah that'd be great any kind of hack and slash action kind of title yeah i'd say so what i ended up falling on uh was actually grand theft auto thought that was perfect that's a great one one. yeah i was just sitting there looking looking through everything i was like you know what grand theft auto and i i just booted it up and i like got in my car and i drove up the road i bought some clothes and I just kind of drove up the coast listening to some music. It was it was perfect. It's exactly <laughs> what I needed. I was just kind of vibing out I'm like, oh cool, something over there. I, I love that. Let's Especially <laughs> like Vice City or GTA five that had such good soundtracks. You just pick a direction right. and just chill and drive. That was pretty much <laughs> it. I mean I have like, you know, you have all your like super nice cars and you just hop in your car and you just kinda of drive up you just drive up the coast and yeah. It's nice. It's kind of like what you want to do anyway, but you don't want your body to make those motions. <laughs> so <laughs> you let your thumbs just do it and you're just kind of cruising. And it was perfect. And I realized right there, like, if I really wanted to play that game, I would have had to install it. So I would say, like, you know, a good moral for this is just to make sure you have one of these, like, epic free roamers installed because sometimes that's just all you need. But you're way too sick and way too, like, intolerant of situations to sit there and wait for an install. (laughs) Honestly, a lot of times if I'm sick, though, I'll just fuck 
there and just throws something on TV. Like, I don't even have the energy to do much game. If I do anything <laughs> game, honestly, handheld is best. <laughs> like, on, uh, that's yeah. actually a really good Pokemon. one. Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's yeah. actually a really good one. Somebody brought that up in the chat, too, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's all we have for what we've been playing this week, though. Unless, Josh, yeah. do you have any <laughs> uh, fun played games you else. played while you were puking? Like, is there any good games for while you're puking? Um, yeah, yeah. You put uh, a target. You put a target in the toilet. Any, and you just try to like hit the mark. <laughs> you find there was no, there's no, there's no vomiting. It was so just personally, what I do sleeping. is I, I find uh, any physical copy of anything made by Ubisoft, and I just I put that <laughs> where I'm trying to aim my puke, and it works every time. Like if you're if you're nauseous, you need to get that out. I just look like, oh god, here's my boxed collector's edition of Far Cry Two, oh, and it works <laughs> oh every single time. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm done with, with this. <laughs> we, we got a little bit of news on with that. Just, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, so we've got Blizzard getting into the real estate property business. Tom. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess your mic is. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take care of it. All right, cool. Just letting you know, we're professionals <laughs> here at 72 Pin Connector, where you can smash that like button or whatever um, we can they can anyway yeah someone someone can um, someone do it <laughs> all right blizzard uh is actually making an esports arena so when i saw this headline i was like holy fucking shit it's getting real blizzard opening its own esports venue in california that will hold roughly 450 spectators depending on the event what what yeah so so I was super hyped. I was like, holy shit, it's it's fucking Blizzard and they're going to make a stadium or some shit. It's going to be nuts. And no, it's like they rented out a couple conference rooms or something. Um, <laughs> I, I guess this is is nice that they're going to have a venue. But this honestly seems like really misplaced news. Like I, I imagine some guy at Blizzard is like, oh, no, oh, no, they're running with this. Why are they running with this? And then you read the article. It's like, oh, like less than 500 people. Huh. Oh god. Okay. It's like Blizzard rented well, a couple conference rooms to throw some Overwatch tourneys in and now now people are like they're building an arena. But uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I guess that's okay. The arena itself will take up um fifty thousand square feet of the Tonight Show's former space in Burbank Studios. So It's their old office? Uh, yeah. That's kind of cool. I guess. <laughs> um like I I guess this is kind of neat, but I don't get why everyone's so hyped about it. It's it's a tiny little hall that they're renting out, essentially. It's nice to see a publisher actually doing something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, the I, right, it's a step in the right direction, really. I mean, it's it's not going to happen overnight. This is the first like arena dedicated to this. I want you know? Valve yeah. to build the Dota Two Mega Dome in Bellevue. That's well, what no one's going to take Mega that initial dome. plunge. Like, thing is, is if this thing becomes a big deal, it's always sold out, all of that, right? Then they'll build a bigger one. It's not like they're not going to do that. This yeah. is like, oh, well, are we going to... They're, they're not even building one right now. They're just like, oh, we have an office. We have some space. Let's make this into kind of a venue. Okay, here's a cool venue. Are people showing up? Yeah, people are showing up. All right, let's go buy a bigger venue. Oh, more people are showing up. Oh great! Okay, let's let's you know build something. You know it's baby steps. No one's gonna say, "Oh, let's build a f amphitheater and and do it strictly <laughs> for think, video games." Like if if uh, EA announced they're doing this, like I think the news would have uh, been less disappointing. But it's Blizzard, and Blizzard doesn't do anything, you know, half ass or they they don't do anything in small chunks. So it's like, oh, hey, we think Overwatch should be an esport. We are funding giant esports tournaments all around the globe and we are franchising <laughs> out Overwatch. Like they went all out and they're like, we're mm. having a stadium that's the size of a refrigerator box. Well they didn't just like jump off of a <laughs> cliff onto that. Like they they did yeah. have those baby steps up to that point. They that's had true. a shit ton of esports before that that they mm -hmm. kind of chipped in money and then they had these these more recent esports like i don't know starcraft this little one 
Uh, and that started like building up and like, okay, well, this is becoming a big thing. And Overwatch had that same inertia. And based off of what they were reading previously, they're like, okay, well, this is going to be a big thing. Let's start this Overwatch League now and to, you know, just jump in ahead of the game and say, this is what we want to instill in this community. So it makes sense that they really did build up everything to that point. This is like the next step, which is great. It's the next step where you're like, okay, we're going to build places that you go to that you watch video games happen that's that's really neat yeah it, so it hopefully is. this one takes off and is huge and then they can build another i just I would, and the, I would have liked to see something that rivals uh what mlg has been building and i realized i realized you know blizzard makes video games they're not mlg mlg mm-hmm. puts on contests right. and shit but you know i i blizzard is kind of the tour de force in the esports scene right now i really wish they would have said hey uh, you got nothing on us, MLG. Come at us, bro. And instead, they right. they're baby stepping. I'm wondering what their actual game plan with this is because you have to remember when it came to the Overwatch League, a lot of the people they were trying to pursue, and I think three of the owners are actual owners in sports, sports. Yeah, mm-hmm. who right. have arenas, who can host events, who can and, charge yeah. six dollars for a beer. Six? Right. When's the last time so you've been you think- a professional sport? <laughs> a long yeah. time. <laughs> so do you think maybe this is more for like small side tournaments or community driven I, I could see qualifiers being held here. Mm-hmm. Um, like you, you could host North American qualifiers in a, a small space. Qualifiers for what? Because there is no qualifiers <laughs> for Overwatch. Yeah, I know. For the worldwide not the international it's totally different it's the worldwide i only see this being used maybe for like hearthstone kind of stuff because oh. hearthstone's getting a good following yeah maybe something like that but there is also some news on the overwatch league uh the first actual contract has been signed a hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary guaranteed no that's pretty damn. huge damn yes yeah, i mean 17 year old Oh my god. Sign me the fuck up. And this is why yeah, I no was kidding. singing from the fucking rooftops of I liked what Blizzard was doing with guaranteed contracts. It makes yeah. esports viable. Yep. It's not like what's happening in the Dota and Rocket League scene where, oh, this part of the season's over, everyone shuffle! Yeah. <laughs> I, I right. totally agree. I think this is the next big step in esports. We need to give these people salaries, and when you win a tournament, it's a bonus and not the way you live. And honestly, I'm fine with this. You pay those guys salaries. If they win, they don't even get any of that. I'm fine with that. Let the owner take it because you know what happens? They go on and say, you know what? I'm better. I want more salary. Like, and like that I, gives the owners yeah. incentive to pay them more because they make them money too. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. would like right. to see. I'd like to see a more uh, a more balanced approach, right? Like, hey, here's an extra fifteen dollars because you won this giant tournament. That's fifteen million. <laughs> that's that's good, right? <laughs> well, no, like, they I, just I wanna, ask I for them, more money. I want to give them like a tiny thing. You but, have to realize Overwatch isn't. It isn't like Dota. It's not, this tournament's worth $15 million. No, it's a season that has a playoffs and it's done. There is no prize pools. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's not like those big tournaments like that. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, 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 I, I think it'll be interesting. I, I do like that Blizzard is taking the anti-Valve approach here. Because we, I mean, esports is brand new. We need to figure out what works. Valve is a very hands-off let's let's hippie this thing up and figure out what works where and let let the market decide and blizzard is all mm. like fuck you we're the nfl um so yeah. i, I, I want to see who ends up doing it better because right now uh blizzard is making a good go at this but they haven't had a really big showing valve for the past seven years has had a huge showing with dota 2 yes but the mm-hmm. way that they treat their competitors is garbage the way that they allow the teams to treat their competitors is garbage i should say with all these sports yeah, yeah. the way those I, organizations I are allowed to treat them is complete trash. i think i think there are absolutely mm-hmm. valid complaints um i think i think signing someone for a year with a big salary is fantastic more teams yep. should do that uh, i think there's a way you could do that with valve style esports though right eg could say hey so and so you want to play for us for a year here's 100k they um, could but the thing is if they're not forced to why would they do it yeah no i i agree i agree i think there are definitely some problems and there's there's things that could be solved um it'll be interesting i'm, I'm just happy that there's finally competition in this space i love valve yeah. to death i love the dota 2 scene 
but we do need to figure out the best way to push esports forward. And Blizzard, it's giving Valve a run for their money. I, I'm I'm excited. I'm glad it's still going forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But mm-hmm. absolutely <clears throat> off of Blizzard and onto something kind of Steam related or Valve related. Uh, the CS:GO uh, roulette scandal has finally come to a close. The FCC is came at the two guys. For those who don't remember the backstory, we covered a while ago. The two guys who were advertising for this CS:GO gambling roulette site um, showed some YouTube videos of them winning big. Turns out that they were president and co-founders of this site and were tricking people into going and putting everything on it. So the FTC has basically come forward and said, hey, that's kind of false advertising. You need to disclose that. Uh, fuck you. Here's a big fine. So it's finally got conclusion. I'm really surprised it took this long because um, everyone knew it was fucked from the start. Yeah, they did. But but let's be real. Internet justice is far, far faster than FTC government justice, right? Yes. They're, they're going to move so much slower, right? We in the gaming industry could know, oh, this looks shady as fuck, but they need to prove legally with lawyers in a courtroom that this is shady beyond the shadow of a doubt. Oh, I understand. But this yeah. is actually, I think, one of the first news things we ever covered on this um, revise yeah probably it's it's been going on for a while now mm. so i was just kind of shocked at that yeah so you know it's, it's not like these guys are going to jail or anything it's it's fines and shutting shit down and it's it's right. good you gotta you gotta be transparent with this shit because if you're not um apparently the ftc will own your ass <laughs> <laughs> well, you're tr- i'm all for it I'm and all also for it. the big thing for them was it allowed for underage gambling yeah, that, that's, that needs to call yeah, out. That that's, that's probably that, that's why really they shady. Yeah. That's really shady. Yep. Um, some other big news: Destiny Two is live on consoles. <clears throat> I watched four hours of Destiny Two the other day. Really? Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, no. So there was for the life of me, I cannot remember his name. Um, but I was watching this streamer, and every thirty seconds, he had like Streamlabs pop up with, "Oh, thanks for subscribing." So I guess I saw like. 60% of the screen of Destiny 2 <laughs> for four hours. Um, but beyond that, I, I watched it and it didn't look bad. It looks like uh, it plays like prettier Halo. Um, the way it plays, he, he was maybe. going through campaign. It wasn't multiplayer. He was going through alone mm, on the campaign. Yeah, and actually for people who are familiar with the first, um, this one actually has a story to it. Yep. It's not going to get patched in with DLCs and expansions later, they actually have somewhat of a campaign, I guess, this time. Um, all in all, I'm hearing a lot of good things from it so far. Um, the beta for the PC was beautiful. People were saying it ran like fucking butter. However, we nice. have to wait, I think, another month or two, or a month and some odd weeks, just maybe a month. But yeah, it's a delayed release because Sony has all that fun shit with them. And to be honest, unless you are dedicated, only want to play on PC play on a playstation 4 they will have more content part of the issues with destiny the first one was lack of content so potentially if you get the option play where the content's going to be yeah from what it looks like this is selling well um the reviews are starting to trickle out because people want to get a full review and i believe there is some sort of uh raid content that wasn't available on launch but it was available um like a day later or something like that so uh, as as one of the big components of the game, the reviewers wanted to hold back and experience the full game before they put out the reviews. You know, being responsible and all that. Um, mm-hmm. Let me let me do a quick Metacritic pass on Destiny Two, and uh, it looks like we're hitting about eighty seven, which is which is a great score. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I might. I, I don't want to like go out and buy this because I don't know if I'm going to play a lot of it, but I would love a demo. Has anybody, has any of us played the first one? No, I've toyed with the first one a little, not much, but my big thing is I was really going to do this and get into that destiny two until mm-hmm. uh, Anthem was showed off in E3. Yeah. And so destiny uh, is a yeah. game that will, it'll take your life. It is a way of life game. You play it a lot. Mm. You play it for a long time. You buy all the DLCs. First person MMO. It was designed to be a 10-year game on the first one. They had a lot of flaws. That's why they did the second. And they Mm. they corrected the flaws, and that's where the second one is taking off. I didn't mean that in a negative light. So I don't want to buy into this when I think Anthem looks better for me. Yeah, I I agree. Um, One thing I did not 
uh, like about the way Anthem, uh, not Anthem, uh, Destiny 2 played during the, the campaign that I saw. Uh, there's a lot of repeated enemies. It, it suffers the same MMO mm-hmm. thing of, hey, look, this is a totally different enemy because he's green instead of red. It's like, <laughs> um, not, not really. It's the same character no. model. They move in the same way. He's got the same abilities. It didn't seem like a bad game. I just, I think I would get bored of it because it's got the same MMO, you know, carbon copy, stamp all the things everywhere issue. Yeah, but you can always add then into that, though. That's, yeah, that's an easy thing to add to. All it is, it is. But do I want to buy it today when it's all the same stamp shit? Or do I want to buy it in a year when the first DLC hits? Or do you want to buy it in a that? year when the game actually comes out? Right. Because that's the one thing about Anthem. It's not coming out till next year. Well, yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm just true. specifically talking Destiny 2 right now, right? Oh. You can wait for the first DLC and jump in then. And, and maybe they would have worked out the kinks. There's still a bunch of people in it. I don't think an MMO, an MMO like that, if you get the chance to get in on the front and you know you're wanting to play it, get in as soon as you can. I think it's a game that's best played to stay with and just go with it. Like Borderlands 2 for me. I enjoyed the fuck out of that. Because I was playing with a lot of people right when it came out. Yeah, I hear that. I nice. went back to yeah. it later, and it was not as enjoyable. Yeah, I agree. I, I was a weird guy that played Borderlands 1 by himself all the way through and liked it a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's a good game. It's just definitely something that's better with more people. Yeah. But that's the Destiny 2 news. Um, none of us are Destiny guys, so don't look for us for really in-depth shit yeah but um just no it is out and there's, it is there's being been liked. uh some controversy because there's a way to color your gear but it's one-time use yeah the shaders yeah oh. so, so the internet is on fire right now angry because because coloring your gear is is one-time use and in, in an mmo you're always trading up gear right you never have the mm-hmm. same piece of gear for very long especially early on so when you're like oh yeah. sweet i'm gonna be fucking hot pink and then you're like oh shit this helmet's got way better stats. Well, now I'm hot pink, and then I've got like a turquoise helmet. I've ruined my outfit. So to be fair, that is how like Guild Wars and stuff was. It was one time you dies, but the reason it's catching fire here, this no, system no, was in the it first. Wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. I, I have Guild Wars too. When you unlock, no, I'm saying Guild Wars like the first one. And oh, two yeah. was in as well. Uh, the first two. one was die once, but, but yeah. the, here, here's the biggest issue. It's not that it's like this. The first one. You didn't have, it wasn't a one use shader. You kept the shader. Right. That's the big issue. This is a, mm. it feels like a pay microtransaction style thing why they're going to one yep. use only. With, with Guild Wars 2, when you, uh, when you unlock a die color to color your gear, you can use that as many times as you deem fit. So I have hot pink and all oh, well. my gear is hot <clears throat> pink. All of it. Mm. 100%. But a lot of the Korean MMOs, you have to like grind hell of stuff, and then you randomly will get a random color, and you can only use that once on one particular place, and See, then it's Korean, gone forever. Korean MMOs need to be <laughs> their own genre because they're not they're not like normal MMOs. They are the hardest of the hardcore of MMOs. Like if you die too many <laughs> times, you will lose literally everything in your account. It's like fucking rogue like the MMO. Yes, please. <laughs> But it's anyway, true. that's Destiny 2. Um, people are loving it. If that's your cup of tea, go get at it. Um, I may end up with it at some point when it comes out on PC. I don't know yet. But South Park, Fractured Butthole. <laughs> the had- most controversial <laughs> and hilarious. And I actually like this, this difficulty slider. I'm I just laughed say- out loud when I saw this. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I did too. It screams South Park 100%. Scream yep. South Park. What are you guys talking? All right. So uh, the South Park, uh, the fractured butthole, the new game that they're working on, they they just showed their difficulty slider from easy to very difficult. Uh, the difficulty slider is uh, in the character select or in the character character creation screen. Uh, it is actually your character's skin color. So the darker your character <laughs> is, the harder the game will be. And Eric Cartman <laughs> comes in to inform you that this doesn't make the enemies more difficult. It just makes your life suck more. This is, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's satirical. Oh, it is God. so deliciously South Park. And I can, I can only imagine, I, who, who said it? Was, it? was it you or Adam or Josh? Someone in our group said, I cannot wait for the internet justice warriors to start bitching because they have to play oh, a black God. character to play hardcore mode. 
Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I cannot wait wow. for all of the internet bitching about this. But so far, so far from what I've seen on Reddit and gaming news sites, everyone loves okay. this, and this is perfectly South Park. To be honest, who, anybody that are gonna, anybody that's gonna be playing a South Park game are not the people that are gonna be offended by having to play as a black yeah. character. For that's, a true. Right. that's true. You're, you're not gonna get social justice warriors coming yeah. to South Park. No, no. And especially if you're trying to do like a, a difficulty run. Those people aren't going to care either. So, so that being I said, actually, somebody might write I an angry article see, about it. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's bound to happen. But that happens with every episode of South Park. But I can oh, actually yeah. see, um, you know, like social justice warriors actually appreciating this feature. They're like, oh, wow, look, it's social commentary, which it is. It absolutely or, is. Oh, they are yeah. poking right. fun at a real situation. Yeah. How dare they? Well, it's yeah. South Park. They poke fun Any, at everything. No, no, no. I'm not Any, saying. I'm yeah. Just, Anybody this is that a, wants this is to be move. offended can find a reason to be offended. Yes. In South Park. Yeah. Yeah, especially well, South, South Park. Park. You don't have to That's kind of the point. Like, over Dude, this else. isn't a new thing for South Park. South Park's been no. down this yeah. if, yeah. every um, single if afternoon, to, I'm sure. Do. If you want to uh, want to see, because you're watching this podcast, you're apparently interested in games. If you want to see one of the most well-researched episodes of television I have ever seen, Watch the South Park episode on free to play games. They use the right terminology. They go into industry knowledge. Like it is fucking accurate and it is hilarious and horrifying in every way. Um, so go, <laughs> go check that out right now. And one more thing of news. Just one. And damn it, I want to say something on this because it pisses me off. LA Noir <clears throat> is being re released for PS4, Xbox One, Xbox One X, and uh, Switch. Nice to see it's coming to the Switch. I've actually, side note, been hearing that the Switch is incredibly easy to port to and that they oh. really anticipate the third-party support to stay solid on Switch. Good. As long as it nice. powers the stuff. Yeah. Good. Good. Definitely. That's good to see. But I know I never Tom, did play L.A. Noir. Tom like the was one that kind of Noir. flew under my radar. What? You were L.A. Noir, right? Yeah. I have uh, L.A. Noir for the PS3. So... Yeah, um, I don't know how I feel about this because it's it's a Rockstar game that wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't great by any means. Um, it suffered the same fate that a lot of games did around that era where they had an open world for whatever reason. Um, you didn't do anything <laughs> in the open world. Uh, you didn't win any points or do any you know really good side missions by stumbling upon them in the open world. You weren't exploring mm -hmm. anything. Um, it was literally there so you could get in your car and drive to somewhere while an NPC talks to you. They could have accomplished the same amount of storytelling with a uh, with a cutscene. Um, yeah, but how are they supposed to market the open world? Right. <laughs> So I, I really I mean, think that's it. Like, oh, it's a Rockstar game. It's an open world. It's like Red yeah. Dead and Grand Theft. It's open. And it <laughs> just, it didn't really work with the game. Um, there's a yeah. lot of things that didn't work in L.A. Noir. I appreciate that they tried it. The facial animations and the character models are by far the most beautiful thing I have seen in gaming. They are nice. lifelike. They're realistic. Know, they're yeah. animated to a T. A, they made a big deal about that. Yeah, it was, it was fucking beautiful um i might actually get this on the switch it's not it's not a great game but it's uh i guess the switch version is going to be 30 bucks from what i read i didn't actually see the price i just saw what was happening i, I think i think the other platforms are going to be 20 <laughs> but because you're playing on the switch it will be 30 the switch tax so yep. so switch why tax. are you so why are you so pissed about it eric so we are now in the era where video games have been around for I mean, they've been around a long time. I mean, really mainstream since like the late 80s in homes. NES brought them home. People have been playing them. Okay. Now there is this whole thing of, you know what? This game was really good. Let's re-release it. Let's re-release this. <laughs> Let's re-release that. Let the game right. stay where they fucking were. Take what you liked about it and make a goddamn new game. But that doesn't. I don't want to play yeah. a game three fucking times in a row. But I how, don't want to have Skyrim on the goddamn PS18. How is Bethesda <laughs> supposed to make money? They can't make a new Elder Scrolls game. They just have to keep releasing the same one and hope that they don't that go bankrupt. That's a good point. Nintendo did this right. 
you want your old games we give you a platform and throw all our fucking old games in there play them as they fucking were we do not need remasters we do not need re-releases nintendo Just remasters ma- all the time what are you talking about if you cannot excuse nintendo no, for no, this no, no, no. i'm saying with the virtual console yes they fuck up with like ocarina of no, time I, that. I have bought ocarina of time no less than eight times throughout my life no, 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 I, I, oh my i'm God. not saying that i'm saying the virtual console okay process. all right so yeah, i i get that it, okay five bucks for an nes game is fucking ridiculous let's let's lay that out right now is it yes did you buy them like three and then i stopped <laughs> i thought i looked up the homebrew channel and put my roms back on honestly for me if i really like a game five bucks isn't a thing for an nes game it is five bucks for uh link to the past like a super nintendo game all right okay yeah i, could I get see it that. Dude, i'll it. pay five bucks mm-hmm. for super mario 3 right now Okay, right now. Th- there's that's different. You're yeah. paying for literal digital gold at that point. There is nothing better than that. <laughs> now, here's the thing: if it's not worth five bucks, is it really worth my time to play it? Uh, like I, I really want. Like, I would uh, want Mario yeah. Two. Well, and hold I would on. throw two hold bucks on. at Mario Two. Like what you spend more probably on your humble bundle and play like a quarter of the games. <laughs> so, not playing it isn't the issue. I'll say that right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> I pay for one game in a humble bundle yeah. and get the rest. Yeah. That's what happens right. there. Like That's if, a good point. If, if Nintendo did the cable company thing of, hey, it's 20 bucks and you get like 100 NES games, but you've, you know, the two good ones are Mario 3 and Zelda, I'd be like, <laughs> eh, okay, do it. But, but it's, like, <laughs> it's like the Mega Man collection, right? My larger point is it's a good point, yeah. re-releasing stuff Take what was good about it and make something new with it. I, I totally agree with your sentiment. I think this is only going to get worse because oh, it's, it is. it's way easier to port. Uh, now that we've got games that um, are built in something like Unity or the Unreal Engine. And guess what? Six years later, Unity and the Unreal Engine still work. You can just be like, hmm, take these project files and port to Switch. Done. All right. We just got to wait for this to compile and we've made money. It's the standardization. Right. Things are standardized now, so it's easy to do. Yeah, yeah. I now, I I think that as things become more portable and more cross-platform, we will see um, digital storefronts just have everything. And I, I really hope that's the case. Like Steam, I bought Half Life Two. Oh Jesus, twelve years ago, um, <laughs> when it came out, whenever it came out, and I can still play that today i don't have to rebuy it again because of steam 2 or whatever because i bought a new pc i really wish that the shit i bought on the wii would show up on the switch well, I, I want i want continuity yes. of storefront that was nintendo's issue yeah. yeah like like uh on on the playstation right if i buy if i buy all this shit on the vita or whatnot or, or the original psp i want to be able to play that on my ps3 and my ps4 and my ps4 pro and whatever i don't expect what i do games like- that i buy on the playstation to work on the xbox but i buy uh, i expect things i bought on the 360 to work on the xbox one Right when um there was a few games on this on Steam that when they remastered them you got the remaster version I think Company I think of Skyrim Heroes. did that Company of Heroes did that I, Skyrim yeah. did that I think yeah. that's great Yeah it is and even even if they wanted to charge for that shit because they do like Ori in the Blind Forest you can't buy the original version of that on Steam only the definitive oh. remastered edition you can buy which is fine Oh yeah um I didn't know that Yep. Except for don't fucking remaster anymore. That's my big gripe. I hate it. I know what the game what? is. If I want to play it, I'll play it like that. that. Okay, don't so waste your time. It's easy to say this about Ellie Noir and Skyrim because we've bought them before, right? And they weren't yeah. good enough to buy again. Maybe Skyrim was good enough to buy once more, but that's it. And only on the Genesis. But when you look at a game like Shadow of the Colossus or Final Fantasy VII, you know yeah. Adam and I are going to have Shadow of the Colossus yeah. day one. You know I'm going to have Final Fantasy VII if I have to go steal a PS4 from somebody. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out a, I need to get one of those PS4s. See, it's see have exactly. So it's, <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that they said, oh, L.A. Noir is so good, we're re-releasing it. It's that they said, hey, everyone else is re-releasing. They're selling their games. We could do the same no, shit. I get why they're doing it. That's, yeah. That I get. Make money, man. Mm-hmm. Do you make money? What I'm saying is don't waste your fucking time. Make a better game. Make something new. You can release a brand new Ogre Battle. It costs make... so much money and takes so much time to make a brand new AAA game. Since when have you been the man of nuance? 
Fuck that. <laughs> so, okay. Oh my God. Okay. Mark down the date and time. For once, I've yeah. got the nuanced opinion and Irk is ranting. We need to have this like cemented. Yeah, make this a plaque. Is, Josh, this make us a like plaque. The, it needs to be uh, brass. This is the Twilight Zone or something. Yeah. I'm just saying, I, oh. I'm tired of that. But either way, that's enough of that rant. I'm sorry. I, I went off the deep end okay. a little bit there. It's, it's all good. Yeah. Every, everyone has to go full Tom at some point. <laughs> I, never, I never played an L.A. Noir if I had a Switch. Maybe I'd buy it to play it for the first time. I, I think for 30 bucks it was worth it. It was not worth the $60 purchase I made way back in the day. Um, mm. But it was Rockstar, so there was a lure. <laughs> See, exactly, and that's yeah. why I bought it for 60 So I'm like, holy shit, Rockstar is publishing a game? Done. And it just wasn't <laughs> right. worth it. I might wait for the first price drop on that for the Switch. I don't... I is there know. ever going to be a price drop? Because I don't think there's it's been fucking, a price drop in the marketplace it's yet. It's fucking Nintendo. Of course there's not going to be a price drop. It won't be... Nothing will ever get a price drop for the Switch. Uh, I really I really want Mario and Rabbids, but I don't want to pay 60 bucks for it. I'd pay 40 but I'm not going to. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to end up paying 60 for it. I really want to play that. I'm just waiting a little bit. I've, I've got I've to gotta finish up my Splatoon. <laughs> yeah, got to sure. play more... Uh, Get to play more reverse CTF. Well, anyway, I think that's all we got for you this week. We went a little long. Thanks for sticking in there with us. I think Adam's got a few things there. Yes, we had a couple of followers during the stream, so let's go ahead and thank those people. Um, let me see. Uh, Nico, uh, Wendolin, uh, Reaper, <laughs> Reaper, Reaper with a bunch of threes instead of E's. Uh, these are hard to read. These, I think they're doing this on purpose. And Joseph Samuels, thank you for following. Oh, the last one was particularly difficult. Yeah. Well, Such a struggle. There's more. There's oh. actually some There's letters after the name, but oh. I kind of abbreviated it. Okay. Uh, remember to genocide those subscribe buttons. 72 PC <laughs> is never reliable for butchering of names because it'll happen. Yep. Yeah. I am the worst with that, so maybe I'm, somebody no. else should call, call me next time. time. <laughs> I am terrible, and that's why I am saying someone else do it. But either way, Sweet. I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Um, if you're here on Twitch, if you would like to see any of the new content we've been putting up on YouTube, we're actually getting content up, so you can always go to yeah. YouTube at 72 we'll Pink Connector. If you're there watching our uh, podcast, you can come hang out with us live, interact with us on chat, at our Twitch page at .tv slash 72 Pin Connector every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to just listen to us and think that we have ugly-ass faces, you can get us on any of your favorite podcast platforms, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, whatever you'd like, or jump over to our webpage at 72pinconnector.com and just do your own RSS crap. And if you'd just like to tell us what we're talking about too much, how much you hate Dark Souls, how much you never want to talk about Rocket League, you can tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast on we Twitter. We will ignore you. Tom will. Yep. I'll respond. <laughs> we will respond. Tom will ignore you. But anyway, I think that's all we got for him this week. And you guys got Except one little bit? Except... Tonight. The post game community. Oh post my god! Community post game. Yes, we one are of those playing words. Super Ball. It's free to play. It's on Steam. Go download that right now. Jump in. We'll be there in about ten ish minutes. We'll see. It's super yeah. small download, so you haven't started yet. Go get it. No super problem. Super Ball. Super. Super. So it's and a join super our Discord. Ball. So yes. it's There's a channel we'll be playing. So it's a super in, in the small chat. download. Yes, super it is small. very small. Yeah. Super small. Super so small. Super. <laughs> uh, hit hit up the Discord. Jump in. We'll be in there. You'll see. You'll see the channel. No need to register passwords or anything like that. Yes, just, the Discord just link in. is down below us. Just scroll down a little bit. You'll see it. Uh, we'll be in there in a little bit. Hopefully, some of the mods will be in there to uh, entertain you with their shenanigans. If you want to subscribe to our podcast, you can do so in iTunes, Google Play. Pocket Casts, whatever, Tom all that shit. Said that. Oh, did you? I, I don't listen to you. Go to <laughs> 72pinconnector.com to Tom get your RSS feeds. Already said that. I, I'm saying it again. Genocide, the subscribe button. God damn it, we're rocking it. Anyway, <laughs> till next yeah. week, y'all. Game on. See everyone. See everybody. See <laughs>